All right, I think we're live. I am Drew Badger, the founder of EnglishAnyone.com and the English Fluency Guide. Welcome to another live video here on YouTube. Today we are going to be talking about repetition and what's way better than that. If you are a longtime viewer of the channel, you will probably know what I'm going to talk about. So this is really especially important for new people. Like if this is your first video that you've watched from me, this video, you should find it uh, very helpful. Uh, let's see what we got here. All right, I think we're working. And uh, chat is working there too. Nice to see everybody there. All right, so let's talk about, I want to talk about repetition because you hear about people using this a lot and I've talked about repetition in many videos, but I want to talk specifically in this one uh, about why repetition is actually not so helpful. Of course, I do recommend it. You should be repeating lessons, uh, but repetition has limitations. Uh, and so I really want to help people understand what's better than repetition. So repetition is important, it is valuable, but I know a lot of people get bored by repeating lessons. Uh, so there are a lot of good reasons to actually not repeat information. <laughs> I know this sounds funny, uh, and the typical advice is that you should learn something and then try to repeat that as many times as possible. You've probably heard of spaced repetition, where you hear something and then you try to take a little bit of time where you don't hear it, and then maybe you hear it again, and then you hear it again after certain intervals, so certain amounts of time, uh, and that can help you remember something. Uh, but remember that the, the real goal of learning a language is, really for most people, uh, communication. And communication is a dynamic thing. So this means every conversation is going to be different. You could even meet your same friend every day for a year and the conversation would be different, even if you're talking about maybe the same thing. You could have people who talk about sports and they every day they meet and talk about their favorite sports team, but the conversation is still different. And the same thing obviously is also true when you're meeting new people. So you will find new people in your life, like you're working or just out you know, in everyday life. You have to be prepared for lots of different situations. So because we only have a certain amount of time to learn, uh, like every person has you know, a certain amount of hours in the day and maybe we don't have a lot of time uh, to learn or practice or whatever. Uh, so if you think about the amount of time, let's say they're only like 15 minutes even something that short, so you've got 15 minutes uh, in a day, you can really do this. Well, let me draw this over here. So if you have 15 minutes a day, at the most basic level for, for spending time learning, uh, you can learn maybe, you know, let's say you learn one thing uh, or we're learning, you know, one or two things, like this could be one phrase, this is another phrase over here. Uh, and then we're just gonna repeat these things again. And we're gonna spend 15 minutes repeating a lesson, so listening to something again and again and again. Uh, again, repetition can be helpful and it's useful, uh, but again, language is a little bit different than something like, uh, like practicing golf or even doing any other physical activity, like playing the piano or playing the guitar, because it's dynamic, okay? So if we have 15 minutes, we could practice something like this and repeat it again and again, or Instead of this, we actually learn a bunch of different but related things. So we build what I call a network, uh, like a fluency network. This is the, uh, it could be for pronunciation, it could be vocabulary or grammar, but things that are connected. So let's make this a little bit more concrete, help people understand this. Um, if we think about, again, how conversations work, let's say we're in a conversation and I've been practicing the phrase like, like a regular greeting like good morning uh, or just even something like hello. Now, if I practice saying this, I really want to get used to saying the word hello, so I repeat that phrase again and again. And this is the same in any language. So if I'm trying to learn Japanese, I learn a nice clear like a konnichiwa. Like I hear that from from a, like a listening CD or an audio or whatever, a video. Uh, and I repeat that again and again. But what will happen in a conversation is that hello might be used, but you might also hear lots of other things. So part of being able to, to communicate with people is understanding what other people are saying as well. So there might be some things that you use, 
uh, and I've explained this to people before, where they spend time uh, reviewing things and they, they maybe get a little bit frustrated because they're trying to learn too much information. Uh, but the important thing is that you would learn a bunch of different greetings, like these are all different greetings like hey or what's up or how's it going or howdy depending on where you live. And even if you don't use all of those things, you're prepared for those in the conversation. So at the most basic level, we've got a few things here. One is the amount of time we have when we're learning. And so if you don't have much time repeating things, like it's, it's, it's only going to help you maybe remember that word or phrase, especially if it's easy, but it's not going to prepare you very well for conversations because there's all of this other information that you might hear instead of that, okay? Uh, and then also like at, a, at an even deeper level than this, repetition is just boring for people because the mind is naturally excited about and interested in new things. That's why most people, when they're trying to learn languages, they're always trying to learn a new vocabulary but they don't review any of the vocabulary. So here's the tricky thing. This is like the real core problem of language learning, uh, which is how do, you, how do you prepare for this? So how do you learn this information and also review it? All right, so how do we learn this information uh, without just like repeating stuff again and again? All right, isn't that, it's kind of an interesting problem because the mind needs to repeat, but it doesn't want to. So the mind, you know, how, how we're trying to develop a habit, just like I'm practicing, you know, I'm taking my daughter to karate class and she has to practice katas or, you know, whatever she's trying to do. And these are, these are just motions that you do again and again. But it's very different from being in an actual street fight with someone where you don't know what's going to happen. All right, so I'm not standing there like practicing a certain thing. If someone is actually trying to attack me, that's a much different situation than when I'm doing something, practicing some motions by myself. All right, now before we talk about what we can do instead, uh, let me check the chat and make sure everything is uh, doing all right over here and see how everyone is doing. <coughs> Arturo, nice to see you there from Honduras. Nice to see you. George is back. Everything is okay. All right, glad to hear it. Hello from Miami. Nice to see you there, uh, Ane. Let's see. Hello from Turkey. Says more. Hello, hello. Yes. Again, we got like different different ways of people greeting, even in this chat right here. So some people say hey, some people say hello, say people how are you, how's it going? Thanks for your help, says Darwin. Professor Douglas says uh, my favorite professor. I'm aiming to absorb. 5,000 words in English. All right, well, this will be a good video for you because I will tell you that you don't actually have to absorb 5,000 words in English. And it's important that if you learn 5,000 words, you better be able to use them fluently, otherwise you're wasting your time. So it's much better to learn fewer words and really know those words well. You will kind of have like uh, a core group of words that you know and then like like another larger vocabulary that's like a passive vocabulary. So you recognize that information, but maybe you don't use it so much when you speak. So maybe in total, you know 5,000 words, but you should have you know, even a few hundred words that you use well. Uh, and that's like the core active vocabulary that you have. So it's not bad to have a passive vocabulary, uh, but usually what happens is people don't develop an active vocabulary of the, the things that they really should be prepared for in conversations. All right, so it's a nice goal, but uh, I would focus more on fluency rather than the number of words you know, because you don't need to have a certain amount of words in order to speak fluently. You can have one word and either use it fluently or not. So if I greet people, if I don't know any Japanese at all, the only word I know is hello, I can still walk around and like say hello to people. I couldn't have much more of a conversation than that, uh, but I would still be able to use that fluently because I understand what it means, all right? All right, let's see. And Nara says hello from Orlando. Nice to see you there. And Charles again, hello teacher from Korea. I am on the vacation now. All right, very good. Now in this we would say I am on vacation. We don't say on the vacation, we just say I am on vacation. But very good, I'm glad you're relaxing. Uh, hopefully you find this an enjoyable video for your vacation. <laughs> Maybe you should go out, uh, do something more. I don't know, go have some fun, something like that. These videos are fun, but maybe you should go water skiing or you know something like that, enjoying your vacation. All right, 
uh, the best teacher ever says Arto. Hi, teacher from Vietnam says Ming. Uh, Mary, when did the live start? Did I miss something? No, it just be, uh, just started like ten minutes ago. Ten minutes ago. All right, Alan from the Philippines. Look at that, people from all over the place. Oh, Brussels out here. What's going down? Yeah, look at that. Another greeting. What's going down? What's it's like people can use what's up and what's going down. <laughs> And they both mean, hello, what's happening with you? How is your life? All right, Michelle says, I've just moved to Texas from L.A. It's very hot and humid. Yes, it sounds like Japan over here. Uh, good night. I'm from El Salvador. I like your class. Glad to hear. And from Brazil, let's see, uh, two people. We got Bianca and uh, is that Gabe? Is it Gabis? And the Emperor. The Emperor. Hey, to get the Jedi. The, the Emperor. Look at that. Hello, teacher. Uh, Jaber Mohammed from Bangladesh and from Serbia. Nice. Okay, so we do have lots of people here. Glad to see it. So what do we do instead of just repeating information again and again? All right, so we know a lot of good reasons why repetition isn't very helpful. It's nice if you can do it, but you will quickly start thinking like, ah, this is boring and it's, it's getting less effective each time I do it. All right, so that's one reason. Another reason is it's not really preparing you well for conversations because you're repeating some things, but you're just not getting a lot of information uh, that also other people might be using in conversations. So different vocabulary, different pronunciations, different speeds in those conversations as well. Uh, so what I recommend, uh, and if you have been in classes with me before, you will probably know the answer to this, uh, but this is, again, specifically for people who are new, and this is Naturally Varied Review. Now, this is an example of Naturally Varied Review over here. Pardon me as a, uh, another siren is going by. Uh, but when we have naturally varied review, this is actually teaching us the same way that we get fluent in our native language. And as an example, uh, I might be like we have the greeting example that I gave before, but let's say I'd go maybe something a bit more interesting and different. Uh, a friend of mine says, uh, like, I'm going to take, I'm going to take his picture. Uh, so this is me. And I said, let me take your picture. So this is a little bit longer, let me take your picture, and this is a very, you know, common situation. Or if I'm asking someone else, like, can I take your picture or may I take your picture, how would you respond to that? Now, what you'll find is there are actually many, many different ways you can respond to that. So rather than trying to practice and repeat a certain response, where we are like, okay, we're going to take like one response, like, you know, very sim something simple, like, okay. All right, that's a, you can respond with that. That's perfectly fine. And you can practice repeating that. So if someone asks me if I want to do something, I know how to respond in that way. But if you want to sound a bit more interesting or you want to say something like, you know, let's have some more fun with the conversation, uh, a better way to do this, let's see if we have, oh, getting some, some longer comments over here. Uh, I'll just give you one example, but if you can think of some other responses to this. So a friend of yours says, let me take your picture. How might you respond to that? So me, like I like to, you know, I'm going to say something interesting. I want to have fun with the other person. I say, uh, okay, be sure to get my good side. Be sure to get my good side, my good side. Now, if you see me right here, I'm on camera. And sometimes when you're taking pictures, like I look good from this angle or I look good from that angle or that angle or something like that. So we call this your side when you're taking a picture. So I can respond, yeah, be sure to get my good side. Or I could just say, just start the conversation or the response here, ooh, get my good side. So I make a face, ooh, get my good side. Okay, so this is a native way of responding to this and there are many. There are lots of different ways we can respond to this, but the point is that if I just practice something, uh, rather than hearing lots of different responses to this, then I can't really choose like, what, what would be a, a good thing for me. Now I might take this and I would respond that same way to lots of different people. All right, so if I'm out like, 
you know, I could be with one group of friends or another friend or something, and I tell them all like, oh, get my good side. And I'm maybe joking or whatever, but again, I can still use that same expression. It's more interesting than just okay or something. Uh, but again, it's a different way of expressing something for that situation, all right? Now, another way I could respond to that, I could say like, oh, make me, let me see if I could fit this in here. So instead of be sure to get my good side, I'll put another response up here is make me look good. Make me look good. Make me look good. So again, this is another way of responding to this same situation. All right, so make me look good. Be sure to get my good side. Again, it's okay to say like, okay, sure, whatever you like. If you'd like to take my picture, that's fine with me. But if you want to say something more interesting, then we do this. Now, how do we get this vocabulary though? All right, you're probably not going to find make me look good or get my good side in an English textbook. Probably not. You might find it, but probably not. Uh, but you will find it if you just look at people in those situations and watch what they do. All right, so this is why I'm always talking about paying attention for situations. So all of these examples, like these are different ways I could respond to this question or to this statement here. Let me take your picture. So, ooh, that sounds very nice. You could take my picture. Thank you very much. Make me look good. Be sure to get my good side. So if I go out and I'm watching people like a, like a simple way I could do this, and I have done this before uh, in Japan, like if I go to a tourist area, I can ask people to take my picture. And I'll just say like, ooh, could you take my picture? Even just to like practice that you know, particular question. But I could practice saying different things and I can also pay attention to what other people are saying when they ask you know, or when they're talking or whatever about taking a picture. So this one situation of just taking a picture, it actually has lots of different examples or ways of speaking. And the more of these you get, so if you spend 15 minutes like we're doing in this video, so if I, we take even you know, 10 minutes, five minutes, just talking about one situation, you're going to learn a lot of different things. Even if you don't remember them all perfectly, it's fine. You would be prepared for them in a conversation though. Uh, but you can take maybe one or two and those become your, I call them your go-to phrases. So your go-to phrase or your go-to vocabulary or your go-to response. So this is the vocabulary you go to when you want to speak. So I'm thinking like, ah, what should I say? How should I respond? Ah, I will go with or go to this usual thing that I say. So when someone asks me to take a picture, I might say, ooh, be sure to get my good side. Be sure to get my good side. Okay, hopefully this is making sense. But the point is like in, in a lesson, or if you're just trying to spend, if you only have a certain amount of time to learn, it's much better uh, instead of learning this way where you're trying to take something and repeat it again and again, it's much better to get lots of different examples. And this is one example of naturally varied review. So rather than taking, uh, again, like a specific word, I want to look at a situation and then maybe hear different people talking about that. Uh, like I've done, I gave an example of that on the YouTube channel about uh, how to make espresso. And it shows you different ways of doing that. And as you see each example, you feel more fluent, you learn more vocabulary, and you're really learning like a native rather than trying to learn something through your native language. Each time you hear another example of something, it's nice if you can get some explanation like, what do you mean by good side? Like, oh, like this side of my face, that kind of thing. But you learn those examples like a native if you learn like a native, okay? So rather than trying to learn the typical way, if you only have a certain amount of time, it's much better to get naturally varied review, and that's going to help you build fluency a lot faster than just repetition by itself, all right? So I can go on with more examples if people have 
uh, like specific questions about naturally varied review and how it works or how to get it or whatever, uh, but especially for the people who are new to the channel, I'm all about trying to get you fluent as quickly as possible. Uh, and so when we do things the traditional way, like trying to repeat, especially if we're just repeating stuff that comes from a textbook or from uh, an English listening practice audio or something, um, typically it's not going to give you enough of the practice you need or it's going to give you enough of the um, like the kinds of English you would hear in real life. So even listening to me right now is not enough. Uh, for most people, if they're watching my videos, they can understand what I'm saying, but they might still have trouble understanding natives in movies and TV shows and things like that. And that means they should be listening to me and lots of other native speakers who are speaking normally. All right, so this is what we do in Fluent for Life. You can certainly do this by yourself, but this is how you should be learning if you want to become a fluent speaker as fast as possible. All right, let's go back to chat. Uh, see how everybody is doing over here. All right. Oh, gay, oh, Gaby. Gaby like baby. Oh, okay, that's how that works. Okay, pardon me. All right, Suzette says, and about you, teacher, where are you? I am in Nagasaki, Japan, currently. All right, Hamza says, I can understand, but I have a problem with speaking. Yes, and so a lot of the problem speaking comes from people actually not getting naturally varied review. That's really the core problem of language learning because we need to repeat, but we don't really want to repeat. <laughs> So how do we trick the mind into actually repeating things or getting the, uh, the repetition we need and also prepare for the dynamic nature of conversations? So how do we prepare when we don't know what other people are going to say? So if I know I'm going to a party uh, and maybe my English is not very good, then, oh no, I'm going to feel quite nervous about that. And I will probably not want to speak very much. I remember this is exactly how I felt when I first came to Japan and I couldn't speak. And so I was in conversations with people, but I, I'm just standing there, especially if it's a group of people talking uh, and I don't understand certain jokes or whatever, I'm trying to follow what people are saying. Uh, but what I started to do once I, I realized I should be learning this way is I started just looking at one situation at a time and thinking what do people say in those situations. So how do people order food at a restaurant uh, or how do you compliment someone like, ooh, that's a nice looking dress or like that outfit looks great on you, or ooh, did you buy a new shirt, or did you get a new haircut, or something like that. So I start kind of paying attention to what other people are saying about things like that, and I'm getting naturally varied review in Japanese the same way that I got it in English when I was young. And so I look at my children now, and they hear lots of different examples. They might hear something from TV, uh, or from me, or from their mother, or grandparents, or whatever. Uh, but they're getting lots of different examples of those things. And even if they don't use them all, they're still prepared for that. All right. So this is how you get prepared uh, and also become a much more confident speaker. So if you don't feel confident about what you know, then of course you're not going to speak very well. And so most of the problems people have, it's really from coming or coming from uh, learning English the traditional way through your native language rather than learning it through English. So if you have specific questions like about how to improve speaking, I cover those in a lot of videos, but I'm happy to answer specific questions if you have them here. All right, uh, let's see. And Kansas says, please record this lesson uh, and skip it. It's four, <laughs> four in the morning. I need to sleep. Yes, I always make these videos available so people can watch them later. That's fine. Yes, you don't need to be live in order to benefit from the lesson. All right. So this is another, if you, if you also listen to my, my classes, uh, like the, these videos that I make on YouTube, you can hear lots of examples of, of native speech. So I still say things that you can use in your conversations, like an example would be so. You've probably heard this a lot. It's a very common basic word, but a more kind of natural uh, not necessarily more natural, but a more interesting way that you might hear this is in order. Whoops, I can't spell in order. E R in order to. 
So you just, hear, you just heard me use that right then. Uh, so I said, in order to do something, or like, so you can do something. All right. So if you're listening to these, like students get, they get very focused on like what is the, the target vocabulary uh, that a teacher is writing on the board or something. But if you pay attention to the, the broader lesson, the, the words and sentences I'm using, you will learn things like this, like, oh, instead of so, he means like in order to. All right. So in order to, to get fluent, you should be getting naturally varied review. All right, it's the same idea, like, so, or if you want to, if you want, or if the goal is something, like we just say, in order to. So in order to get fluent, this is what you should do. If you want to get fluent, this is what you should do, all right? If the goal is fluency, this is what you should do. And as you're hearing these different things, maybe in order to becomes one of your go-to phrases, all right? In order to catch the bus, we have to hurry. All right, so it sounds a little bit more, maybe it's slightly more educated. It's not, it's not like the most casual thing. You just say like, like the most casual thing you might say is like, uh, like we, we gotta go. <laughs> we gotta go to catch the bus. We gotta go to catch, C-A-T-C-H. <laughs> I can't write and spell at the same time, or write and speak the bus. All right, so we got to go to catch the bus. That might be a very quick, casual way of saying this, or I could say, in order to catch the bus, we have to leave. Or I could say, we have to leave, we have to leave now in order to catch the bus. But the point is that you're getting lots of different examples of these things. So listen, and, and, and again, like you can listen to these, these videos again and again. That is a, is a kind of repetition. Uh, but you can also just look at other people when they're talking about similar things. Like if we got to do something and then look at the vocabulary they're saying. Like, oh, that's interesting. They said uh, something different or they also said the same thing. All right. Those are all examples of naturally varied review. Uh, but yes, you can watch these videos anytime you like. That's why I make them available. All right. Uh, let's see. Hey, teacher says, Tom, good morning. Nice to see you there. Hamza says, okay, I got that one already. All right, Tom, classmates, greetings from uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Let's see, Abdi, can I ask something? I saw another an English video. They said listening and reading only. You cannot get fluent speaking even though it is wrong. What is the meaning of their said speaking? No rules. I don't understand what that means. Um, but I'll tell you generally speaking that you don't need to speak in order to become fluent. Uh, speaking is the result of having developed fluency. So fluency really means that you understand information very well. All right. Uh, so I've covered this many times, but Again, there's always new people joining us. And if you heard that right there, I used some incorrect English that natives often use. I said, there's always new people joining us. So there's always new people joining us. This is incorrect English. It should be, there are always new people joining us. But I use that incorrectly because it's faster and easier. I think I talked about this in last week's video. So there are always new people joining us, but it's much, fa it's much faster to say there's, yeah, there's always, there's always, there's always new people joining us, all right? So if you're, and now make sure I like don't lose my train of thought over here. Uh, let's see. Yes. So going, going back to the question about like how, how people can learn, usually what, what people are doing when they're learning is they have, uh, they, they, maybe they learn. And when I say learn, it's usually like they get a translation of something because that's how most people learn languages. So they begin with something in their native language. We'll just call that a translation. Uh, and then you learn the English word for that. So like if I learn the word, I don't know, like 
uh, yuki in English, and that means snow in, or yuki in Japanese means snow in English. Um, so whatever that is in your native language, people begin with something like that, and then they try to speak. Uh, and then usually there will be repetition in that. So people will just repeat the same word again and again. But this is not really preparing you for real conversations. It's pretty easy if you're only trying to learn an individual word, like this means that, like a, like a physical object. So a shirt or a cat or something like that that's easy to understand. It gets more complicated and you have to think a lot more if this is a grammar point or like a much more... Uh, like a difficult grammar point, something more complex. Uh, and so if you're learning this way and then you're trying to just repeat what you learn, you're still not going to be very well prepared for real conversations. So someone will say something different or they will blend their words and they will not be clear and then it will be confusing and you think, wait, I, I learned this and it doesn't sound like the textbook or the teacher or whatever. So Instead of doing this, it actually is possible you can learn through reading uh, and listening or watching just like you are doing right now. You're learning without speaking. You're not saying anything to me or if you are speaking, I can't hear you. Uh, so we're not having a conversation here. I'm just speaking here and, and getting some feedback from you via the chat. Um, but these are all ways that you actually build understanding uh, and that understanding comes from getting these lots of different examples, a naturally varied review. So if, if the question is saying, like, you can get fluent without speaking, then yes. All right. So I would say the same thing. Rather than speaking, like most people try to do this and they don't get fluent. So they're still trying to speak or they get out and they, they complain about saying only simple sentences in their conversations that they, they never really get to a comfortable level with their English. Uh, and, that's, and that's partly because they're trying to speak, but they don't actually understand what they're saying. So if you don't feel confident, you don't really know what you're saying, then of course you're probably going to not, be, uh, not feel very confident about speaking. So instead, you should get lots of different examples through different ways like this, like reading, writing, whatever. Uh, and then the understanding leads to confidence, and that leads to speech. So if I feel very confident and strong and powerful, then yes, I want to speak. It's nice and easy for me to do because I understand the vocabulary. But if I don't, then speaking is not going to help me. So hopefully that answers that question. If I got that correct, I don't know. If not, let me know. <laughs> All right, uh, again, Jim is back. Sometimes I had to frustrate, or ex uh, you can say I experienced that, or I just like have a frustration, or uh, I get frustrated and I get uh, exasperated while learning English. Why, uh, why does that happen? Well, in general, uh, it's because you're, well, you know, it could be a lot of reasons for that, really. I can't assume uh, one particular thing, but typically people are, are probably overloading their mind with too much information uh, or you're making it more difficult for yourself by learning things through your native language. So without thinking about it, you should be uh, aware of this as you learn. So if you're feeling frustrated, like you're, you're reading something, like me, if, I, if I'm looking at like a Japanese textbook and I read through something and I find I still don't understand what, what it's trying to tell me. Uh, so that makes me frustrated. And then I think, well, that's not really a very good lesson, or maybe I'm just a bad student, I guess. I don't know. Probably it's the lesson. Uh, usually uh, lessons are trying to just give you information, but they don't really help you learn much. So that's one example of being frustrated by how you learn. But other examples could be like you hear something, but you, you're not hearing it clearly, or maybe something is a little bit difficult for you and you're not getting enough examples of it. So there are lots of reasons why you can be frustrated with something. It takes a lot, actually, uh, to make a good lesson, to make it understandable. All right. Uh, Evita says, Drew, do you live nearby a nearby hospital? Sirens every class. Yes. Actually, up the street, there is a fire department. <laughs> And I'm not like in the room I'm in, it's not uh, perfectly soundproof as you can hear. Sometimes there will be cicadas outside or something. So I do apologize. Uh, I have a, like a good microphone, but unfortunately a good microphone also picks up uh, lots of the, the sounds out there. So that's another good, if you're listening carefully for this vocabulary, like to pick up 
a sound. It's like I, I physically pick something up. A microphone is picking up sounds as well. Like, whoa, there goes like a loud car or something like that. Khalid says, is the contact speech make me fluent speaker? I don't understand what that, what that, what do you, what do you mean by that? Is the contact speech make me fluent speaker? What do you mean by that? Give me some more information. Like, do you, what do you mean by contact speech? Uh, Tom says, I missed the beginning of the class. I'm sorry for that. It's okay. I don't, I don't expect anybody. I'm, I'm happy to just make these videos and people can watch them whenever they like. You know, actually, I don't schedule them because I enjoy my freedom. <laughs> I talk about that a lot. So I'm happy to have kind of a regular schedule, but I don't want to tell people there's a class and then like for some reason I can't do it or something like that. So I feel bad if I'm, if I'm unable to, to fulfill that. All right, the emperor is back. Uh, sir, should I learn grammar if I want to become an English teacher? Please uh, let me. Let's see. All right, uh, let me explain very quickly about grammar. Grammar is essential, but the, the tricky thing is that you don't have to learn it by studying a bunch of rules. Now, if you want to be an English teacher, you probably should know like the names of grammar points and other things like that. Uh, when I teach, you'll notice I don't talk about them because it's not necessary to know that information as a learner. Just like my young daughters, so my uh, like seven-year-old and four-year-old, uh, they don't know what a, like past perfect is, but they know how to use it. You know, so they're they're learning those things. I mean, they they don't they know how a toilet. You know, they know how to use a toilet, but they don't know how it works. <laughs> Similar kind of idea. So if you want to be a plumber, uh, then you should know how like a toilet works or whatever. But if you just want to use a toilet, then you can probably figure that out. Maybe this is a bad analogy. Um, but in general, yes, you need to learn grammar, but the important thing is, that is, is how you learn it. Uh, so if you want to be a teacher, you probably need to study a lot more about specific things. But if you just want to learn for yourself to be a good speaker, it's not necessary to know. And this is why I explain to people, rather than thinking about a grammar, like a, a specific grammar topic or whatever, uh, it's much better to think about like when we use something. So rather than uh, like, when do we use like the present continuous? We don't think about that. A native does not think about, oh, I'm using the present continuous. They don't even know that vocabulary really. Most people, I think most native English speakers would probably not be able to tell you what the present continuous is. They can probably guess, they're like, well, it's in the present, I guess it's happening now and it's continuous, like I'm still doing it, I guess. Like they, that, that's how natives would think about that. Uh, but the important thing is, it's like, if I'm showing you how something works as a learner, uh, I don't care if you know what the present continuous is, but I do want you to know how to speak about something happening right now, all right? So if I show you something like, like I have like, you know, some food in my hand, like this is some food or whatever, and you can see me eating right now, like I am eating, I am eating. And then I show you something else, like I am, I am boxing, or I am reading, or I am jumping, or I am looking, something like that. It's through all of those examples that you can contrast with something else, where like yesterday I, I looked at something. So I'm, I'm not looking right now. Uh, I'm not watching a movie. Yesterday I watched a movie, but right now I am not watching a movie. So I can show you these things without trying to explain what the grammar rule is. So I really want to make it clear that yes, you do need to learn grammar, but the important thing is how you learn it. And if you learn it like a native, then you can use it fluently. But a teacher would probably need to learn more information about how this works. Let me know if this, uh, if this video is entertaining for you guys. Click the like button so I can see. I'll, I, I'm looking at that and it's like, it looks kind of low. So click that like button, unless this video is awful, in, in which case you should tell me in the chat. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, here we're going. Let's see. Uh, today is the first time I heard how you get back up, how you get back up. Like how, like the expression, how you get back, like what do you mean? How you get back up, get back up from, from what? Do you mean like in general or are you talking about that like a specific, a specific, there, I mean there are many ways or many times when you might use that. Like you could be a boxer and like you have to get back up again. But let me know. But that's very good. Like it's nice English, nice uh, phrasal verb there to get back up. Uh, let's see, Jalila, if I'm, make sure I didn't skip anybody here. 
Okay, I think I got that. All right. Jaleel says, I have a problem, or I have a problem is, or you could just say, my problem is, I do understand English, but most of the time I don't understand from the first time when someone speaks. Yes, uh, I thought about doing a video about understanding English better. Uh, I think I've covered this in a number of videos already, but it's, it is a common problem. Uh, the basic advice I would give is to really focus 100% on what the other person is saying. So usually what happens in a conversation is your, your, your attention is divided, so it's split between the other person and yourself. So you might be listening to what they're saying, but you're also trying to prepare what you want to say. Uh, it's much better to take your time in a conversation. You can slow the conversation down uh, if you need more time to think, that's okay. So I can listen to someone, like I, tr I try to listen 100% to what they're saying. I don't always do that, but that's the goal. I try to do that, uh, especially if I know like it's something more difficult or I need some help with it. Uh, and then I can ask the person person if I don't understand something. So I just say like, oh, like, oh, what, what do you mean about that? Or like, what is like, I don't know that word or something. But I'm, you know, I feel comfortable asking about that. And most people will explain like, you know, what is, what does this mean or something like that? And they will give you an explanation. But really try to put all of your attention on the other person and focus on listening and understanding that person rather than uh, maybe dividing your attention where you're thinking about what you want to say. Uh, and I promise you, you will start understanding a lot more. And if you don't understand, you can just ask the person. In general, though, when you're listening to someone, like usually there's a general idea and then you can go a little bit more specific, like specific words or phrases. And then there are also key words where you're hearing something. A friend of mine might be, maybe he has some longer sentence. Yesterday I was going to go to the park, but it was really hot, so we didn't go. So yesterday I was going to go to the park, but it was really hot, so we didn't go. And so I'm looking at that like there's a, a kind of, it's almost like a, a story framework. So it's a, like one sentence, a very short story. This was the goal. He wanted to go to the park. The problem was it was too hot. The conclusion was so he didn't go. All right. So often you will hear these and if you, you pay attention for the key words like something, 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 but oh, I know now there's like something that's going to change or the opposite will happen, something like that. So I'm looking for like a general, just getting a general sense for what, what the conversation is about or what the other person is speaking about. Uh, and then I'm looking for maybe just individual phrases to follow. So rather than trying to look and, and pay attention to each word, I'm looking uh, for broader phrases and then key words that maybe change or do something about the conversation like but or and or so, something like that. All right, so the, the, the biggest advice I can give is to spend a lot more time really listening, paying attention to what the other person is saying. So without worrying about what you're going to say, you have to have a little bit of faith in the conversation where like, I don't know what I'm going to say next, but I'm going to put all my energy into listening to the other person. Give that a try. Uh, all right. And Tom says, in a specific situation, we can have lots of situations to explore and learn in English. I think it's better than repeating words or even singing because we don't sing to each other. <laughs> yes, uh, I guess unless you live in a musical where people are singing to each other, like a Disney movie or a play or something like that, yes, people are typically not singing to each other. But singing is certainly, you know, listening to music is a great way to learn the language. It's just another one of the things that you use in order to learn. So there's that phrase again. It's another one of the things you use in order to learn, okay? So if you listen carefully, you'll hear me like this is a like a speech pattern that I use a lot. And if you pay attention, you will hear that Ooh, in order to do something, in order to, in order to, in order to. And then you will hear me as I blend it together, like in order to, in order to, like that. It's like in order, in order to, in order to, in order to. <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but this is again how natives are learning the language. And so when I'm giving you these examples, I try to go back and highlight certain things. That's another great phrase or great uh, vocabulary for you uh, to highlight something, to highlight. Hot. 
what, uh, I can't, I really, I just really can't write and <laughs> let me be quiet. Highlight. So to highlight something, I'm showing you, hey, look at this. Like I'm putting a, a bright light on that thing. You might have a, like a highlighter pen when you were writing things or, or reading things in a book, you might highlight something that's important, all right? Similar idea. <clears throat> So yes, uh, you don't have to personally sing, but listening to music is a good idea. All right, uh, let's see. Khalid asking me again, is the contact speech make me fluent? I still don't know what you're asking about. Maybe, maybe or did I like skip that? Oh, I think I like, uh, the chat skipped me down. All right, let's see. All right, I answer that one. And Tom said, uh, it's possible to influence speaking English only by listening to someone speak in English is the question. Um, I, I want to make it clear that, yes, like you can get fluent only by listening to someone, but it's going to be slower uh, and the, the understanding will take longer because if you're not like, you know, seeing a physical example of something uh, and also if it's only one person. So it, let's say you live with your like live with your mother uh, and you live in a cave with your mother and she's the only one speaking to you, then you will, you will really start sounding like her and you will get used to her language, like her voice and the way she speaks. But if you go out, uh, you leave the cave and you go out into the real world and you hear lots of other people, you will not be prepared for that. You will be like a non-native speaker going into the world. So you will probably know a lot of the vocabulary, but you won't be very well prepared for it. So listening is helpful. Seeing things is even better because you're getting listening and you're learning something. So if I, if I, like, if I cover something up and say like, I'm holding a red marker in my hand, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's going to be much more difficult and I have to explain what that is. So that's like if you have a listening exercise or something. But if I show you like, look, I have a red marker in my hand, then you can listen to what I'm saying and you can understand it because you're connecting the visual, like what you see, with what you hear. So this is how you learn your native language. And then you can do that same thing in English. So yes, you can learn and you can become fluent. You can understand certain things, but it's going to take more time. So the fastest way to get fluent is to get lots of naturally varied review. And that means from different people and seeing it and hearing it and writing it and reading it in different ways. You can save the speaking part for when you're feeling very comfortable, but usually like at that time, then you really are ready to speak. So if I know what the word red is, like I go to a store and say like, I want that red marker, then I can feel confident asking for that. But if I don't know what this color is or someone told me and I don't remember, then I'm not going to feel very confident asking for that thing. So yes, you can get fluent that way. It's going to be uh, just a little bit slower, but it's certainly better than learning like only through a textbook where you don't hear examples or you don't hear native examples of speech. Uh, again, Shim, again, you wore my favorite shirt. <laughs> All right, we're back with the, uh, the favorite shirt over here. Let's see. Sprinkle, nevertheless, I want uh, because I like purple. Glad to hear it. Yes, I don't know what exact color this is. I guess it's kind of purplish something. Uh, but thank you. Eunice says, hello from Morocco. Uh, konnichiwa, Drew. Arigato for your lessons. What, how are handsome? How are handsome? I don't know if you're saying I am handsome or just like, what does handsome mean or something, but uh, welcome. <laughs> uh, Keiko says, uh, yes, it's stressful. Uh, I couldn't respond. Here we would say uh, I couldn't respond, respond, so I couldn't respond. All right, so henji ga deki nai ba wa I can't, I can't respond. Deki nai ne, I can't respond. All right, so if we're, this is another thing where you, where you get lots of examples of something, like the difference between a noun and a verb, and I don't like using the terms, but just so you hear the difference. So respond, you would hear like, like I need to respond, or they responded, or you didn't respond to my call, to, to my call. But if we're talking about a thing like a response, did you read my response? I sent you a response, okay? So just pay attention for these different things when you hear them in conversations. Uh, it works uh, similar to Japanese, but you will hear it, again, it's much better to learn it 
uh, through getting lots of examples. Naturally varied review. All right, but very good. Uh, let's, let's see, uh, Tom says today's class is being very nice, or you could just say this class is nice. It is nice. All right, uh, El, El Sira, I think, yes, I think I got that correctly. Uh, let's see, nice to see you again. Uh, an MBO, if that's a, I don't know if that's a name or an acronym. Uh, hello, sir, how can I master phrasal verbs? You have to learn them visually, and I take you through three steps of this in uh, a program I called, uh, or I call the Visual Guide to Phrasal Verbs. So you can find this in Fluent for Life. Uh, you will also find examples of it. If you just look up uh, phrasal verbs, uh, you can find a few, I think I have two samples from the program. Uh, but you will see actually many videos about phrasal verbs on my channel. And an example is like, take off, put on. All right, so the same way I could take off a shirt, I could take off my glasses, I could take off the cap of this marker. And I put the cap back on. It's only by seeing lots of examples that you really understand the core meanings of phrasal verbs. And then you can start learning like, wow, like, my business is really taking off. So here we have take off the cap, but like my business is taking off. So we could think about that like a plane is going, like we are ready for take off. So that's a phrasal noun, like the, the actual verb to take off. Uh, but like to take off, like I'm going up. So like here I'm on the runway and now I'm, whoosh, I'm taking off, I'm going off. So in a figurative way, I can talk about like my business doing well or like a community doing well or a team doing well. Like, wow, the team is really taking off. All right, so it just means they're, uh, they're becoming more successful. So you see how it begins with understanding from a physical, the idea if you can learn that way, uh, and then you can start learning more figurative uses because you understand those well. So that's how you master phrasal verbs. Uh, let's see. And the emperor again, sir, should I learn grant? Okay, I want to answer that one already. How's it going, Drew? This is Ildar Tsubasa here. Hello. I have, uh, let's see. Hi, teacher from India. Tsubasa from anime. Yeah, Tsubasa is a, like a common, a common name. Uh, but yes, I think it's also like anime characters will have that as well. Uh, but I think he's actual, actually Japanese. Uh, let's see, me from Brazil, that's right, when use a via or by? Uh, it, it just, it's, it's not, it depends on the situation. <laughs> As I always say, it depends on the situation. So if we're talking about like to do something, like I might, I might like, uh, like go by bus. Like I'll, I'll take a bus to go to a particular place. Uh, you could you could say like to go like via or via you have both you will hear both of those pronunciations to go via bus or go via bus um, it, it just it depends it, but it again like there are some times where like like I am uh, like I am by the school so here this is a different meaning than, than this, where we're talking about like in, in the way of doing something, this is just like I'm close by something. So I would not say like I am via the school. We would, wouldn't use that because that's a different meaning. So always remember like you have to just look at different situations and think, uh, does it fit in this situation or not? And so you need to just get lots of examples of that. And that's why it's so important just to focus on certain things until you really get lots of good examples. All right, and that's how you know them like a native. All right, hi, first time here says, good dear, nice to see you there. Hi, teacher from Haiti. Tom again, when is the best time to use the contract for like this? What do you mean? Drew's shirt instead of shirt of Drew. What do you mean by contract? Let's see. Ah, like using the word of? Yeah, th I mean, this is uh, like, the, if I say like Drew's shirt, that's just a very casual, very simple way of saying it. If I say like the shirt of Drew, that sounds like, I don't know, like I'm a, I'm a king or something like that. Like, wow, like the shirt of Drew is amazing. Uh, but I would just say like, yeah, Drew's shirt, something like that. So if in this situation, if I'm just talking about something, it's a little, you make the, uh, like what you're saying, you make it longer by putting of in there. 
So you don't have to say of, and often I will write like that, and then I will I will switch the sentence and, and not, and I will take the of out of it. So if you're just talking about a group of something like that, it's much better to just say like this guy's thing or his or her or something like that. Uh, or Drew, Drew's school instead of school of Drew, or can I use the contracted? Ah, that's what you mean, a contraction. Like, ah, I see what you're saying. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can do, yeah, you don't need to use of, you know, I, like you, it, it just depends on the situation. If you're trying to be more formal about it, you know, like the United States of America, you know, where it's like the country name is a little bit longer. It's more formal than we would say that. But if I'm just talking about somebody's clothing, maybe it doesn't matter. Drew's shirt. Eunice, can you please talk about how to improve speaking? I need some tips from you that I do every day, like repetition, imitating, or t talking in front of a mirror. I mean, that kind of roadmap. Yeah, uh, don't do any of that stuff. <laughs> so those are all typical things about like speaking in front of a mirror or whatever. The best thing I can do uh, is, number one, to stop speaking. I know this sounds like weird advice, but stop speaking and just get lots of naturally varied review. That really is the best way to build fluency because speech comes from confidence and confidence comes from understanding. So if you don't really understand what you're saying, then you won't feel confident using it. It doesn't make sense for me to repeat in front of a mirror if I'm not really feeling confident about something. So if I feel confident, I don't need to repeat anything in front of a mirror. But if I do not, repeating is not likely to help me make it easier to understand. So we, we have kind of two different issues with that. So let me say that again to make it more clear. If I, if I understand something well, I don't need to stand in front of a mirror and practice it. And if I don't understand, and that's why I'm trying to like practice saying something, uh, each time I repeat that, I'm not learning anything more. I'm not actually reviewing that vocabulary. Uh, the only real benefit I could think of is just you practicing using something. Like if I, if I learn like a, I don't know, like a tongue twister or something like that, or I'm trying to just, just get practicing saying something. But if I've already heard lots of people use it and I remember the phrase, I understand it very well, uh, then I'll probably use it just fine. So the best thing, and that's what we're talking about in this video, is rather than repeating more information, is getting naturally varied review. So you're hearing lots of different things. You should focus on something, and you can be specific about that. Uh, you can learn, you know, you can focus on pronunciation, like a certain kind of people where I want to, I don't know, like some people have trouble understanding certain ethnicities or accents or locations, whatever that, that place is. So if I move to, uh, like here in, in Japan, out in the country, like out in the countryside where my wife's grandmother lives, like her Japanese is like real like mumbly and hard to understand. I'm, I can understand her now. I can have like a good conversation with her. But when I first met her, I was just like, what is this lady saying? I, <laughs> it's like, I, you know, I was like, it's fast. And I, I, you know, just using lots of local, local dialect. Um, and it was just very difficult because I didn't have lots of exposure to it. But after I heard her a lot and I heard other people and I, I'm getting that, like again, that naturally varied review, that's what helped me uh, enjoy the conversation because I can understand her and I know how to communicate. I'm not really like speaking like that back to her, but she understands what I'm saying. I understand what she's saying. All right. So rather than like what we talked about at the beginning of this video, like speaking to the mirror, you know, I'm talking to the mirror, I'm talking to myself in, in my car or whatever. That's fine. It's useful. Uh, if you're trying to just like get your mouth maybe correct about what you want to say, but you don't improve your understanding of something by repeating it. You improve your understanding by getting more varied examples. Okay. So it's like if I'm trying to look at something in, in a room, I want to find where something is and I have one of my eyes covered, uh, I can keep like grabbing like this and I still probably won't find it. But if I get, if I open both of my eyes, it's very easy to find that thing. And this is an example of slightly different review. 
So the first thing, like the first eye, like shows me, okay, there's something over here, but I can't tell how far away it is. So I need to open the other eye, and now, oh, okay, I can, I can figure out like where it is and like how far away it is. That's why we have two eyes, and that's why they're on our face like that. We don't have just one eye because it would be much more difficult to, to see where things are. You need two eyes to do that. And so in the same way, you need to have lots of different examples of what vocabulary is or other people speaking things, because I can hear on a listening practice exercise like somebody says a nice clear sentence. But then in real life, people don't speak that way. And so now, because I've only heard that one example, I'm not actually going to, uh, even if I repeat that phrase again and again, so an English example is like, how are you today? So I hear that and I'm practicing that in my car. How are you today? How are you today? How are you today? But then someone in real life is like, hey, Drew, how's it going? Hey, Drew, how's it going? Hey, Drew, how's it going? And I'm, I'm like, wait a minute, they didn't say, hey, how are you today, or whatever, <laughs> you know. And so again, like the, the repetition of it, this is, it's, it's why it's, it's less helpful to spend your time repeating and more helpful to get lots of different examples of things with naturally varied review. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> yes, hopefully that answers that question. Let's see, Jose, hi, teacher, I've been watching your videos lately. Glad to hear it. <clears throat> Oh no, now the chat skipped down again. Chat, why do you do that to me? Oh no, it's like a whole bunch of, uh, let's see. Oh no, did it really skip down that long? All right. Um, okay, all right, I got it here. All right, Mary, uh, I can speak English in my mind very well, but when it comes to really speaking, it is hard to express myself. Tell me why. <clears throat> I can give you some specific advice about that, but what, what is the thing that stops you when you get into conversations? Is it because you're worried about making mistakes? You don't know about the grammar or maybe the pronunciation is different from the people? I've probably given a few examples already, but let me know. So respond and keep this conversation going. Other people probably have uh, similar issues, but it, it just depends. So let me know what's happening at that moment in your mind. So you can speak to yourself just fine. You get into a conversation and up, oh, something happens. What happens? <clears throat> uh, all right, and let's see. Ayub says, when I started to speak, I won't get the appropriate word even though I know it uh, very well. Very well, not very much. Um, yes, so in this situation, it's much better, like you probably don't know the vocabulary as well as you think you do. And a lot of people, like there are reasons why you could get nervous about something, like you're just nervous, like a, even uh, like a kid who has to speak in front of his classmates as a native speaker in, in English, like there's no language problem. That student will still feel nervous and ah, uh, like oh, I, I, I forgot what I'm going to say. So that can happen to you if you just feel nervous in general. But the way to conquer that, so to overcome that nervousness, um, other than just like feeling good about uh, you know providing like a listening like a, a person who's listening in the conversation, um, <clears throat> when you get into a conversation like it, it's the, the the preparation you have for that. So again, like if you're making simple mistakes in your writing here, I'm guessing you would probably be worried about like am I using that word correctly or not. So very rarely do I see people like sentences of perfect English from people who are also worried about that. So some, some people will, like if I see a comment and there are mistakes in that comment, then I'm guessing the person probably doesn't know the language as well as they think. And so they will worry about that in the conversation. So the solution becomes getting more naturally varied review. All right, I'm trying to make this very easy. There's like really just one thing you have to do. It's just learning English as a first language. And a big part of that is getting naturally varied review. All right, Eunice again, your approach helps me develop a mind map of English. Now I need a roadmap or plan to do daily. Thanks in advance. Yes, this is exactly what we do in Fluent for Life. So we show people like, this is what you learn and every day do this, like this step and then this step and then that step. And all it's doing is just showing you how to get lots of review so that you feel more confident, you understand the vocabulary very well, and then you want to speak. It's that easy. Uh, let's see, Fyodor says, Fyodor says, uh, are you in California? I'm in Toronto. 
we have now, ah, like that, or you can say it's now 10 o'clock. No, I'm not in California. I'm in Japan. Wow. He means maybe. Let's see. All right. Uh, El Crio says, I was in the U.S. once for a Christian conference. I understood like 90%, but never was able to get the jokes until now. I literally, I rarely get the jokes. Yeah. And again, these are different things that you learn depending on how you're learning. So if you if you spend time listening to English lessons, like you're that's time that you're not spending learning from real people in real situations. All right. So that's why in Fluent for Life we actually give you lots of examples of people actually speaking, and you hear jokes and like we have like specific lesson sets about that and help you understand uh, more about like humor that kind of thing. Kego says, so I'd like to be able to talk more in English. Yes, that's why we're here. Help you have, a, have a, like a better conversation, feel more confident. And again, uh, the, the great thing about what I do is that I, I don't care if you speak or not. My job is to get you fluent. And so when you feel confident because you understand something well, then you will be uh, much more likely. So you will want to speak at that point. So it's very easy. You teach English as a baby is learning to speak from his or her parents. Yes, that, that is the goal. So it's the same way you learn new things even today. So you learn new things in your native language like this. You just hear people explaining things or you hear some new slang or vocabulary. At first, you don't understand what it means. So I remember somebody told me, like especially now, I am 42 years old. And so now younger generations are, are learning like weird vocabulary just like I had things I used to say like my parents are like what are you talking about <laughs> and so I feel like an old man but the point is like you're learning that same vocabulary and you're learning it in the same way so I'm not getting like a linguist's explanation of something it's just oh what is that vocabulary what does it mean now I'm probably going to hear it from a few different places or I will my friends will be talking about that thing or whatever. You know, it's the same way you learn your native language. You get the real language, you get understandable lessons, and you get naturally varied review. That's it. So the speaking comes later. Most people do not start speaking right when they learn a new word, even in their native language, because they don't feel confident about what it means. So if I say something like, like I heard the expression or the phrase like on fleek, and I still don't know what that means, actually. <laughs> I'm guessing, like, if I remember, it's like on fleek. Now, this sounds dumb to me. I don't know what this vocabulary means, but I'm sure you could look it up. Uh, and I'm not hearing that in day-to-day -day life anyway. Um, but it is something that younger people use to be on fleek. Uh, I'm guessing it means, like, cool, I think, but I don't know. Uh, and so I would not feel confident using that vocabulary in a conversation. Like, a friend of mine is like... Oh, like, I, I think it means, like, very cool. Like, wow, that's a nice-looking shirt. I'm like, man, that shirt is on fleek. And he looks at me like, no, on fleek, on fleek means stupid. <laughs> so there, like, I've, I've, I've said something. I've used the vocabulary incorrectly because I don't really understand it, okay? So it, this is the same thing that native speakers experience, and it's the same thing you experience in your native language. All right, so this is why if I hear something, I'm not going to feel very confident using it. I can repeat this. I can say on fleek, on fleek. I could try to say it perfectly, but I still don't really feel confident about using it in a conversation. So I don't use it. Now, if I heard like a couple different examples, I was watching a news story or I hear some kids and I can understand the context of it, I understand what it means, then I would know, ah, okay, I feel confident. It means something is cool or whatever. I don't know. You guys can look that up. Uh, I don't know what it means, but the point is the same thing. So even natives will not feel confident about using something. It's all the different examples that really build your understanding of something. And that's when you can use it, uh, use it fluently because you feel confident about using it. All right. Uh, Elric, again, this, uh, at least this time there are 40 likes instead of eight from the last one. <laughs> yes, I think we had, we had some more likes. But yeah, click, click the like button. How easy is that? Click that like button. <laughs> yes, click the like button. Uh, Say so it says, how does your course work? All right. Uh, so if you're asking about Fluent for Life, the basic idea is that... <clears throat> Let me erase this. So if we know 
that we get fluent by understanding, and if you don't understand vocabulary, then you will not use it fluently. Like That's just a basic, fundamental foundation about language learning. If you don't understand something, you won't feel confident using it, like the example I just gave about on fleek. <clears throat> uh, and so usually what happens is like learners have been learning English, uh, as a second language, and so they've been learning it through their native language. Um, they've been, I'll just draw like a little chart for you. Maybe this would be a little bit easier to understand. So very simple here. So this will be English uh, as a second language, and this is English as a first language. And so this we'll call this like the how, like the how you do it, how you learn, uh, and these are the results. So for how you learn English as a second language, it's usually translations. And I'll try to write this quickly. So translations, you study grammar. Uh, and then you've got maybe memorize uh, vocabulary. Uh, and usually it's like slower, uh, easier to understand English. Uh, and you have like, it's, it's typically textbook English. And because of that, so we, if we have like, this is how you learn, uh, and it's going to give us certain results. So one of the things it will do is it will, it will not teach us. So it will not teach you real English. You will have trouble understanding people in real life if you only, if you only learn the kinds of things that are in classes. So I've given a few examples already in this video, but like a greeting, if you learn hello, but you don't also learn like howdy, how's it going, what's up, what's going down, other things like that, then you will not be prepared for them in conversations. So it does not teach real English, it teaches you, uh, I'm trying to write this quickly, it teaches you to translate. So when you're in conversations, you're thinking about what to say in your native language, and then you translate it in your head and then you speak instead of just communicating in English, all right? So you're thinking about rules. You forget words. So natives are hard to understand. Just like my handwriting is hard to understand. <laughs> but I'm trying to do this quickly. Uh, but you can see how this works. So when you learn through a second language, like you're learning English through your native language, then you're learning through translations, you're studying grammar, you memorize vocabulary. It's usually slower than real English, so you're not getting actual examples of native speech. Uh, then that's going to cause all of these problems. And that's why the people who are watching my videos like have the kind of complaints that they have, the kind of frustrations and pains and problems that they have like that they're talking about in the chat. So everything they're mentioning is this. It's the result of learning this way, all right? Uh, and it's not your fault. I just want to say I always have to remind people of that. This is the way everybody teaches because you don't need to become a confident speaker to pass tests in school. So this is why everybody just does it this way, all right? Now, what I do is I teach people uh, in English as a first language. So that's what I'm doing here. So we're going to learn, it's basically three things. So very simple, we're going to learn like real English. And by real English, I mean the vocabulary that natives use in real conversations, uh, as well as you know things that you might find in a textbook because that English is also used like of and the and there, other things like that. But we're also going to learn slang and phrasal verbs. <coughs> Uh, the things I'm also going to give you understandable messages. So understandable messages means I'm going to explain things all in English, but the same way I would talk to a child or just an adult I'm speaking with. So I'm trying to keep it very simple and give you examples of things that you can understand. Like I don't explain it logically. Like, look, I'm, I take the cap off the marker. I put the cap on the marker, all right? And the last piece of this you need is what I mentioned at the beginning of this video, which is naturally varied review.
So because you get, like if I just show you something one time, you, you kind of get it, you understand it logically, but you will likely forget that. So you need to hear it again and again, but in different ways. I don't want to just repeat the same thing over and over. I would like to show you different people doing slightly different things. So here's me, I'm taking the cap off the marker, I put the cap back on the marker. Here's someone else that's talking like, yeah, I take off my hat, and put my hat back on. Someone takes off their shirt or their coat or something and then puts it back on. And as you hear these different examples, it's giving you real speech, it's giving you understandable messages, and again, the naturally varied review will help you understand how natives are using it. And so the results of this are you build fluency. So you understand, you get confident, because you feel prepared for the conversation and you understand what natives are saying and you get fluent. So my goal is, is not even to help you to like to make you speak. You don't have to repeat anything in, uh, in the program. Uh, you certainly can, like it's, it's nice if you do, but like the, the, the thing that's really building your fluency is this. So it's understanding things like a native and really feeling confident about the vocabulary. And that's how you get fluent. So what we do in the program is kind of take you from, from this learner, like move you from being an ESL learner to being an EFL learner. So we, we take you kind of, you're at like a lower, I'm not drawing that very well, let me see if I can fit that out here. So you start kind of here at a lower level and we move you up in steps to get up here, all right? So very simple, we help you understand the grammar, vocabulary, uh, lots of different speakers, so you get used to people like a British English speaker or someone from New Zealand or from wherever. Uh, and each time you're learning a new thing, you get fluent and you build a little bit more confidence and fluency uh, in that new thing you learn. So you go through uh, lesson sets that take you like this, and that's how you get fluent. You finish one, you go on to the next one, and then the next one. But you get to choose what you learn so you can learn whatever you like. All right. So that's how the program works. Uh, you can click on the link in the description below this video to learn more. All right. Uh, let's see. Jokes need to understand the culture, not English. Yes. Part of part of understanding the culture is yes, being able to being able to get those jokes. Gan Sham again is grammar important or not? I speak my native language fluently, even though I do not know the grammar at all. Now be be careful. I want to be clear, you do know the grammar, you just don't know the names of the grammar points. <laughs> so that's the difference. So when you're speaking your native language, you speak correctly, just like the toilet example of you can use a toilet even if you don't know how the toilet works. All right, so it's two different, two different things. But you are using grammar uh, and you are using it correctly, you just don't, you just learned it like a native speaker. You learned it as a first language rather than learning it through your native language. All right. Mary again, I love uh, to use the word would when I speak English, but I never learn how to use it. All right. Well, it depends on the situation. So I think we covered would actually in the last video. So the previous video I was talking about, um, like, would you like to do something? And when you're learning a word like this, what you should do, like the, the English as a second language way to learn vocabulary is like we take a word would, and we're gonna give you like every usage of it, all right? But what we, what we want you to do is learn like here's wood in this situation, and here's wood in a different situation, and here's wood in a different one. And you get to learn kind of how they are connected, but sometimes it's completely different, all right? So I would like to do something, or would you like to do something? We're talking about like in the future, what would we like to do, all right? Or if we're talking about like uh, something in the potential, uh, like uh, let's see, if I if I did something like I don't know if that would work. So when you're learning something, you're rather than thinking about the vocabulary, think about the situation and when you use something. And so when you hear natives use something like, oh, they're using would in this situation or that situation. All right, let's see how much work we got here. Let's see. Obrigado, says Pedro. Let's see, Drew, I would like to know how to apply the varied review focused on pronunciation. Yeah, uh, so varied review for pronunciation means you're listening to different speakers talking about the same thing or even saying the exact same thing. 
So when you hear five different people say, hey, how are you? I think one of the first videos I made on YouTube is an example of that, like over 10 years ago. So it's hearing like five different people or whatever, how many people is like four or five people, I think, in that video. Um, but the, you'll see the same thing in the video about making espresso. So what we do in Fluent for Life is that you're going to hear lots of different people saying the vocabulary from that lesson. So each lesson is about a conversation, and that conversation is kind of split into a couple of different pieces. So you learn about the grammar from that conversation, the vocabulary, the pronunciation, all of those different things. Uh, and then as you go through that, you get a little bit more review each day. So you're listening, reading, and uh, listening, watching, and even writing some of the vocabulary. You can certainly speak along with the lessons if you like, some people do, uh, but the most important part is the understanding of the content. And so when you're trying to get naturally varied review by listening to different examples of people, that's the same way. That's how you would get that. Uh, let's see. The high Norda example was great. Thanks, teacher. Glad to hear it, Tom. All right, Alan says, is uh, written and English needs a much perfect grammar than speaking? Uh, I'm guessing you mean writing? Yes, but uh, typically if you're doing like professional writing, yes, it should be correct. Uh, we write high five or maybe high five. Uh, like, uh, probably like high, like spelling it out because you're going like high five like that. But I mean, you could write it, I guess, either way, depending on how you're, uh, how you're talking about it. All right, Sita says, hello, Drew. It's always great uh, being with you for your live lessons. Thanks so much. Glad to hear it. Dran, uh, let's guess the color of the shirt Drew will wear the next live stream. Yes. Uh, your the guess would probably be black. I'm guessing because <laughs> I have like I have like 30 black shirts <laughs> And so actually the trick is like which black shirt am I wearing think about that one Like is it like this cotton black shirt from that place or this other cotton black shirt? Yeah, think think about that. That's a nice tricky bit of trivia for you Michelle says I remember that you made the video about pronunciation put together two words to make one sound like I remember and I got it Yes, I've talked about that uh, frequently, um, about blending sounds together. So you can hear that in Frederick as well. So I recommend if you uh, download that app, if you have not already, click on the link in the description below this video to get Frederick. But you can listen to individual sounds, and then you can hear how those sounds blend together in words, and also how they blend together across words. Uh, Elkris says, uh, or El Ciro, excuse me. Uh, I now understand like 98% of regular American accent, but there are some accents very difficult for me to get, like Australian. Yes. It just, you need to spend more time with those people. That's it. All right. So again, Shim said, when you speak English with Japanese person, does that person understand your accent or not? Uh, it depends. Usually I will be like, I'm usually just speaking Japanese in, with Japanese people, but if, if they understand, yeah. Uh, oh no, I'm probably not going to get to all these questions before I have to shut it down. We've got like five minutes left. All right, let me be quick here. Uh, hi, speaking to native speakers, is it enough and more efficient than shadowing and repetition, or should we practice two methods in order to build a true training? Uh, I would just get naturally varied review. You will feel more confident and you will learn faster that way rather than uh, rather than trying to like repeat something again and again. If you're trying to get fluent as fast as possible, Naturally varied review is going to help you the fastest. Uh, love your pronunciation, says uh, illustrate English. Tom again, let's see, using the question mark. When pronunciation is a teacher, Drew, pronunciation is also important to learn yet. All right, Japan, we're close. Dran, what advice can you give for my reason for not speaking fluently as I tend to forget the word or term of what I'm trying to say? Yeah, it's, it's usually because you just need more review. You need more review. You don't, know the, you don't know the vocabulary as well as you think you do. So there's a difference, remember, between knowing the vocabulary and really owning that vocabulary where you feel confident about using it. All right, I got what you mean uh, firstly through physical learning, then it comes to abstract ones when learning phrases. Yep, you got it. All right, look at that. Any suggestion about how to look up meaning of expression with many examples? Uh, to deeply understand, I'm thinking on trying ChatGPT, says Pablo. Um, yep, you could use ChatGPT or you could get uh, go to Google. But I would look up like, you're looking up uh, like synonyms. So these are similar words. So you would use maybe a thesaurus. 
for that. Um, but you can also just put in like, um, like ways of saying something. So like ways of talking about this. Um, or you could just watch, like it might be easier to find particular topics rather than trying to look up specific vocabulary. So if I'm, if I'm looking up uh, like how to grow roses and then I find 10 different videos about that, that's going to teach me a lot of vocabulary for that thing. Uh, but that might be a little bit easier for you. All right. Uh, Drew, could you pronounce O'Reilly and O'Reilly? O'Reilly and O'Reilly. I don't know. I think that might be the same pronunciation for both of those. I'm not Irish. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Tom says, uh, okay, I like the black shirts too. Glad to hear <laughs> Also click the like button, says Keiko. All right. Uh, but that should be it for today. I think we've gotten to, look at that. Well, Rui says, uh, first time I learned. Oh, no, now we get a bunch of stuff coming away. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> you guys got to stop commenting. Stop commenting. All right. Uh, let's see. Thanks for the answer. All right. Some nice hands up there from Tom. Pretty good exercises for the triceps uh, of your hand while you're clearing the whiteboard. Yes. So if I, if I want to do like some erasing, something like that. Good, good like muscle building exercises over here. All right. Uh, well, that's it for me today. Remember to go back. Uh, you can repeat stuff if you like, but I promise you, you will get more results faster if you do naturally varied review. So you can get this for pronunciation, for vocabulary, for anything you like, uh, especially if you just get fluent for life. We go through all of these things. It's all set up for you. Or you can try to do it by yourself, looking for lots of different examples of things. But if you'd like to learn more, you can click on the link in the description below this video, both for fluent for life and for Frederick. For everyone else out there, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.